Howdy do buckaroos, this is Joe Layden from Cowboys and Indians Magazine, and I'm very happy today to be speaking with Max Walter Silverman. He is the writer and director of a uniquely engaging and beautifully acted Western romance called A Love Song. And uh, I have to ask right at the start, uh, years ago, I was talking with Peter Fonda about why he has cast Warren Oates in The Hired Hand. And up to that point, you know, Warren Oates had been known primarily for paying really, you know, unpleasant, you know, pushy, uh, you know, not, 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 all, not nice guys. And, um, you know, Peter Fonda said, no, I saw something in here that no one else did. And I cast him as this sensitive, you know, fellow. Uh, was that part of uh, your thing? What did you see in Dale Dickey and West Studio that maybe nobody else has up until now? Well, it, it starts with just looking for people who feel honest to the place where I live and, and where I shot the movie. Um, it, it begins with little more than that. And um, there aren't there aren't many actors who I think are honest to to that sort of place. And these are two of very few, and maybe there are in fact no others. But um, um yeah, and it was and 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 these were roles that were gonna exist in a lot of silence and needed to a, an expression of a whole life lived um, often without words and without it being said or explained and maybe what a lot of other people saw in these actors that um, led them to be cast as often tough and violent characters to me is just the hallmarks of of of, of having lived a full life, which was important to these characters who are um, looking for something new, but have experienced all sorts of things as well. And, um, and they're, they're just very good at what they do. And that's, that's what was most important. Of course, you know, I also like the idea of shedding a gentler light on things we've been bred to see as in, in very tough ways. And it's sort of gratifying to have actors who have played so many harsh roles and, and, and sort of strange as well to that, that this is the first time, you know, they had an, an on-screen kiss. Um, it's beautiful, but also sad, I suppose, what, what that says about where we are. Um, Anyway, that's that's kind of long and mandry, but what it boils down to is, is they're real people and damn good at what they do, and um, gave these roles such a such presence and and such affection, and honesty, and I feel very honored to work with them, and I, as I consider them both legends and admire the work they've done over so 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 many decades, and and it's it's a real privilege to get to just build on that whatever little humble piece this is. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, silences. And that's a beautiful part of the movie. Uh, you, you trust the actors. Uh, how did you get their trust? How did you, you know, get them to feel, okay, it's safe for me to express this and I'm, I'm not going to look like a fool out here that, you know, I'm going to walk across this high wire, but I know that Max is always going to be there with the net. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. Um, I have to imagine that when they showed up to our little set with, uh, you know, my mom cooking food and my eight friends from film school, it was probably a little strange. Um, and they would have, it would have been very understandable to be uncertain about what they were getting themselves into. Um, but, you know, it was my first rodeo. They've been through this a million times and I, I tried to understand that. And 
I did not presume to tell them everything about who their characters were and what they were doing. Rather than that, I tried to gift them my affection for the characters and and sort of just set the mood for the world we were in and the world we were building and and believe that they would be able to construct um, these roles on top of that. Um, I think I have to give a lot of credit to the crew I work with. I've worked with all of them many times before and we've sort of figured out this strange little way of making movies in the middle of nowhere together. And I would like to believe that we have a, there's a quiet confidence to the way we went about our work, that even though the scale was very small, there is a efficiency and a competence that hopefully gives the actors um, confidence to do what they do. Um, or maybe they're just so dang generous of spirit that they uh, jumped into the thing, despite all the uncertainties, which perhaps is how every film is at the end of the day. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't entirely know the answer, but whatever happened um, and by whatever kindness, I'm grateful that it did. Now, if I uh, read the, the closing credits uh, correctly, uh, you went with film rather than video for this, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, me and the cinematographer I worked with named Alfonso Herrera Salcedo, we went to film school together and, and started going you know, home where I lived in Colorado to do our short films. And we were all, we always shot them on film. There's a lot of reasons. Um, one is just the hopes that it kind of brushes the story with a touch of the surreal and allows people to maybe not look for the rigidness of reality too intensely and hopefully accept the world on its own terms and the journey on its own terms a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, I, I think of this story and, and the work I've done as fables or ballads more than kind of realism or like an actual slice of life. Um, and, and there's like a gentle bit of magic in this world. Um, gentle in the way that love is magic and and I you're always looking for tools to help people um accept accept that things are going to be maybe a little different a little stranger a little more beautiful and that's one way um it works it just works for us it works for the rhythms of the way we shoot we like to be able to put things together patiently but very thoughtfully and specifically it's not a lot of improvising um words are few and very carefully chosen in the same way that actions are and movement is. So it just fits the deliberateness with which we move. And then finally, it also sort of fits the rhythms of nature that we're dealing with out there, which is a lot of dealing with clouds, dealing with sun, uh, never at the right times, of course. And it's uh, still a, a, a somewhat more accommodating canvas for just radically alterating, alternating uh, shades of light than digital has yet achieved. Um, so it made it easier for you to uh, show uh, recreation and romantic excursions uh, <laughs> with, with, with this approach to filmmaking. Uh, another thing I, I really enjoyed about the film is, is, is some of the a little little details uh you know she, she's not poor but she's obviously watching her her pennies so you know what kind of beer would she buy she buy bush because that's always the cheapest beer the cooler uh i love the old radio uh was it difficult to find an old transistor radio like that <laughs> um it's, it's a great question. Like, I, I, I live out there in Colorado, and I've been living out there with my uh, partner, Juliana Barreto, who's also the production designer. And we just found the things we needed over a few months of driving around and going to our friends' houses and 
go into antique stores and things there. And, um, you know, I, I, I wrote all these things uh, based on what I see people with and what's actually out there. And we had a pretty simple rule, which is if we can't find it here, it doesn't, doesn't belong here. Um, it's not much more complicated than that. And so, yeah, I think the radio came from, a antique store right around there but um i don't know i i spent my whole life going camping at that lake i saw people with all sorts of interesting ams and fms and short waves and things like that so um yeah truth truth of the matter is there's plenty of people who are who are uh, on their own little journey with time and and found what they needed at some point and haven't seen reason to let it go. I, I actually kind of admire that. Um, I hope there's some little little tribute to that. I hope, and I hope we were able to get those details right. Well, also, you know, the fellow, you know, delivering uh, the mail, well, not on horseback, like he wasn't riding. I mean, he had the mail on the horse, just bringing, you know, the horse. And, and of course, as, as I alluded to, uh, the little family, uh, wanting to dig up the remains of their their dad that had that they buried there, and uh, the little girl does all the talking for them. Uh, first off, uh, were they, you know, the, the the mailman and the family were they actors or were they locals? Um, mailman was an actor. The family or those are just all my friends who I grew up with. All those guys. They were all, you know, they're all like welders and carpenters and they're literally all my closest friends since birth. Um, so had to had to throw in somewhere and that the girl, Marty Grace Dennis, she's a local kid, um, fiery as hell. And, you know, um, I think putting that together, I was thinking about some of the real tough dudes I grew up with basically and how and watching some of them have daughters and having uh, you know like little girls enter their lives like the way these really harsh characters could just melt and soften into into butter and it, it could like really change their lives um I just I, I love that so there's a little a little shout out to that in in their dynamic. Well, Max, you've been very generous with your time. I appreciate that. One final question. Was there a day, was there a scene where you woke up and saw that was on the call sheet and thought, oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess I can't call in sick today. Uh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have written this one. How am I going to pull this off? Um, I probably the scene I was most nervous for was the, 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 the kissing scene in the trailer. And I was nervous cause I'd never directed one before. Um, and had I known at the time that Dale and Wes had never done one either, I would have, I don't know if that would have been comforting or even more terrifying, but I, I figured, well, I've got these pros. I'm, you know, they'll know what they're doing and we'll be tender and gentle and thoughtful and patient and, and do it right. And, and that's what we did and it worked and the awkwardness and the uncertainty all played into it. Um, but it wasn't until later that I learned that they had the same inexperience and uh, nerves about it as I did. Um, but yeah, somehow sharing that together, I, I think it, it came through properly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Max Walter Silverman, who will go down in history as a director who allowed Dale Dickey and Wes Duty to finally get a little sugar. <laughs> Not more than an honor. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, congratulations on the movie. Thank you very much.